Okay. Did you feel it? We're talking about that 4.7 earthquake centered in Malibu this morning. It rolled through just before 7.30. There are no reports of anyone getting hurt or any real damage. Bob live with us uh, for Dr. Lucy Jones's conference. Uh, a reminder, we live in earthquake country in case we needed that reminder. Hi there, Bob. Yeah, and what's interesting is that this is already a scheduled event with the city of El Segundo as this is national prepared, emergency prepared at month. And Dr. Lucy Jones was one of the keynote speakers here at this event. So we came here to talk to you about that. First, let's start off the top here because uh, what's the latest that we know about the earthquake that we felt this morning? Okay, we haven't changed too much on that. A magnitude 4.7, it was at 728 this morning, five miles north of the city of Malibu, widely felt across the region. We have reports of, of people feeling it in San Diego uh, and well north up into the uh, close to Bakersfield. So it was widely felt and not too surprising at a 4.7. Uh, it's had uh, numerous aftershocks, including two that are above three already. So, you know, it's, it's an active aftershock sequence. It'll continue. We'll have probably another one this afternoon. You were saying widely felt, and I want to ask you a question about one of what some of our viewers were saying, because some that live in Brentwood said, I didn't feel it at all. They lived in Santa Monica. They said they felt it. Or Newport Beach, they felt it. Why do people feel different things in different areas, even though, like Brentwood, you're feasibly somewhat close to what would be the epicenter? Right. So, given a location, right, how far away you are is a big part of it. But a given location, I felt nothing because I was on my exercise bike pedaling away. I was already moving. If you're moving, if you're walking, it's very hard to feel it. If you're sitting quietly, you're much more likely to feel it. If you're sitting quietly on an upper story of a building, you're even more likely to feel it because the building can amplify the shaking a little bit. I was asking you about the app because people in our newsroom also said, hey, my app notified me. And so the app seemingly is getting better. Is the technology getting that much better that we now are getting a, a better warning when some, when these things take place? Should we be relying on these, on these apps? I think you should rely on them. Remember that the app is that interface with your phone. The data is coming from the U.S. Geological Survey and its network partners, including Caltech, right? So the information that we're getting is uh, we're getting more instruments. That's true. Uh, we've been developing better algorithms, you know, and testing them out and, and tweaking to solve problems. So there's a slight improvement in that distribution. There's also whether the app gets to your phone. How does the notification get out? And um, uh, but yes, the solid information about early warning is good. And I was saying they're, they're working, but you're saying you also kind of joke that we're just getting more of these well, earthquakes. Anyway. <laughs> right. If you feel like you're now getting more than you used to, it's because we're having more earthquakes that are worth notifying. They don't want to notify you if you aren't going to feel it. They do if you if you're going to feel it. You you want to get a notification so you know your system's working. So I'm sure people here at the, El, at the city of El Segundo are glad you're here because you're going to give them some valuable information. How important are these, and what's your message going to be for this city and other municipalities? people at home, businesses. I know that's a broad question, but, but but what should people be doing now to prepare? Okay, you know, there's stuff about what you do to prepare. I'm going to let the fire chief tell you because that's what they study. I don't study how people respond after an event. What I really understand is what we should do before the event. And a big part of that is not accepting our current building code, which says as long as you crawl out alive, that's a success. There's no other requirement. We could have complete financial loss, totally destroy our cities, unable to use it. But as long as people don't die, the building code says that's what my job was. Mm -hmm. And I think we should go for more. We could save so much money by investing just a little bit more up front to build better buildings. Mm -hmm. In the end, that's going to be my message. Mm -hmm. If we want our cities to survive, we need to do more than just not kill people. Mm -hmm. But you're talking to here like CERT members, you know, people, civilians that are going to be responding and small businesses. And what should they be doing to prepare? All right. Number one, they should be supporting this work when their legislature come and say we want to do this and then what you do directly first what you do beforehand make sure your own house doesn't fall down you might think my house must be fine the building says it's okay right no you should go and get a financial specialist to check out your house then you need to be ready to know what to do during the event and that absolutely is drop cover hold on when it's strong shaking that is the safest thing to do running outside kills people okay? and then the third thing is how are you going to recover and that I say make a plan with with your neighbors, right? Have you ever talked to your neighbor about this? They're the ones who are going to need to be helping you when transportation is down, when the communications are down. We need to recognize that when we actually have an earthquake on the west side, if the Malibu fault that we just saw or the Newport Inglewood fault that we're standing next to here, the Newport Inglewood fault could cut out every freeway on the west side. Six major freeways gone. 
how are we going to get around after that? Do you have a plan for it? Do you know how to know where your family is? Talking about it beforehand is probably the most important thing we can do. I just want to ask you about the drop cover and hold on. And this is right. because I was talking to the chief here, and he said here at the fire station, everyone did that when they, as soon as they felt it. Sure. They asked everybody here how many people actually did that and virtually no one did it. So we, we will we know when we actually really need to drop cover and hold on? If you wait till you need it, you're not going to have gotten it done, okay? <laughs> Doing it when it's not quite that bad is really important for developing that muscle memory. And it's why we have the shakeout drill. That's coming next month, right? It's part of this is, is to get people to practice it. At schools, obviously, they do it. But our businesses should be participating in shakeout drills. How about our churches? I'm helping a set of churches actually do drop cover hold drills during services mm -hmm. right could be a place you're going to be yeah. all of those different places if we practice it we're much more likely to do it when we need it uh, i i kind of looked around and thought hmm this is this an, i knew it was but right. then <laughs> you know. right. i mean i was all right so the last what I felt was the 3.4 in South Pasadena. I was actually in South Pasadena, and it was so quick that by the time you realize it really is an earthquake, the shaking was gone. Yeah. So nobody dropped cover, hold on, because why bother to do it when the shaking's already stopped? So you do it. You do it. I do it. Okay. I do it. I, I just had to and ask. I, I've practiced, and I've just, okay. we actually timed it. Because mm -hmm. this is one thing about getting the early warning. What do you do with three seconds warning? Right. Well, it can get you started doing that drop cover, hold on. Okay. I, it take, took me 10 seconds every time. I practiced and tried to time it okay. 10 seconds before I was under my desk. So, so we should be laughing at the news anchors if they start going underneath I the desk. I would really like it if the news anchors would do it and model correct behavior. There you go. Thank you, Thank Dr. Jones. You. Sure. We appreciate it. I know you have Thank to get you. there to, uh, to the event today. We appreciate your time here today. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Dr. Lucy Jones here for this Emergency Preparedness Month, uh, a speech that she, ha she just so happened to be doing on this day, a reminder that what she's talking about here is not theoretical. It is going to happen. We just need to be prepared for it. Yeah. Same back to you.